take care of your wives. Listen to me. Enjoy the moment when you have it. Enjoy the moment when you have it. I was running a series for the past few days on why long-term marriages break. Why marriages break after they have spent 20 years, 30 years in the union. Among the things I've shared in that write-up is the fact that for any marriage that breaks, it has already been cracking. If you don't undo the cracks, you cannot avoid the breaking. So they can be there 25 years after you see they have broken up. They didn't just break. They have been having cracking that they didn't mend. And one of the things that led me to say what I'm saying now is the number four one I shared two days ago. Why long-term marriages break after some years is because they didn't learn to build genuine intimacy. When you start having children, they feel a vacuum for long years. 10, 15, 20, maybe 16 years in the union. If you started early, for 16 years, all your children were with you. Your attention were all on them. You never had time for one another. So all you are doing was, some people are just in the union because the children are there. So when they now leave you, you are 25 years in the union, your eyes now open that it is me and you now. You are not used to being together. It will be difficult for you to stay together. Because you never learn to enjoy the moment when you have it. So don't just be a father and a mother. Be a husband and a wife. Be a friend. Be a partner. Be lovers. What is this that you are just doing? Mama Sikira, Mama Sikiru. You are going, what? Be lovers. Be lovers. Be lovers. We don't have all the years here on this side of eternity. Your time is short. And in case you don't know, you are not going to have your wife in heaven. No, you are not going to continue this thing in heaven. <laughs> So you have had to be the, enjoy the best of yourselves. So you now later discover that when the children are no more there, they have not built friendship, they have not built intimacy, they have not built companionship, they are now strangers living together in the same home. So over time, they get tired of each other. Because what was filling the vacuum has left. So you have your wife here, you have your husband here, enjoy one another now that you have each other. Not only that, like the preacher have said, we must learn to honor our mothers. I'm going to wrap it up before we go into the communion. It's my charge for the mother this year and also for the fathers, the husbands, that not only should the children be the one to honor their wives, as husband also, Take care of your wife. The kind of things mothers do by the makings of God. God has made our mothers or our wives to be multitasker. Can do many things at the same time. Not only are they taking care of children, they are even taking care of you as the father. There are some men that I've met in my life, they don't eat the next day still. You have to cook it every day. And even they themselves, they cannot. And then to appreciate the one that does, they say it is their role. Thank God it is their role, but they have option. So the fact that somebody is taking care of you doesn't necessarily mean that the person is optionless. It is a choice they made to. And the only thing expected from you is appreciation. The wife you don't appreciate will frustrate you. The woman you don't appreciate will invariably frustrate you. Not intentionally. But because it is normal, as part of life, appreciation is a booster for more. Appreciation is a sense of value. What you value, you appreciate. Women are not things. They are human. So they are not things you just have. Now that you married her, that's all. No, that's not all. It's just the beginning of a journey. As much as we are doing what we need to do as women... Playing our great role, taking care of our children, taking care of our husbands and, our, and every man figure in our life. We must always ensure as husband or as the receiver to be appreciated. And appreciation is not costly. Neither does it take anything away from you. It is simply pride if you are not appreciative. That is the reality of it. 
It doesn't cost you anything. Unless God help you with a woman that is demanding and God has not blessed you and blessed your pocket, you may be in trouble. That no matter what you buy, say, is this what your age mates are buying for their wife? And in case you are such a mother here, repent in the name of Jesus. Amen. Value what you have because somebody is eyeing that thing you call husband. The husband you don't also celebrate may not be able to perform well. While you are on the journey as mothers and fathers and husband and wife, one of the greatest things I want you to do, like the preacher has said, oh no, it doesn't cost much. A simple word of affirmation, a simple note of appreciation. Right before she wakes up, you're already written on the side of the bed. If not for you, my life will not be balanced. Thank God you came into my life. I just love you like Lovina. And I cannot do without you. I'm training you now. This, this time I'm training you. They are paying to listen to me on this. Thing. Just no detail. I'm telling you. You do it for one month with your wife. You will see changes. I'm telling you. Borrow the word. Love you like Lovina. But don't use Loretta. Because that one may be. It put you in trouble. Glory to God. There is something that appreciation does. While everyone was sleeping in the night, I got my card, wrote it there. My life is connected to you as my heart is beating, bing, bing. <laughs> Put it right beside the bedside. Wake up in the morning. That's the first thing. That's how you do the thing. It's honor. It's honor. It's honor. Now, I know a lot of men, they say, but they don't do that on Father's Day. You are not the only one there. You are not the only one there. It's not because they don't want to do, but they are going to surprise you very soon. I'm training, I'm pushing them. They have something for you, you are not aware. But even if they are not replicating, it's not a competition, it's an assignment. Husband, love your wife. You are not wiser than God. Wife, submit to your husband. Their loving responsibilities essentially demands one because it's the most difficult one to do. Love your wife. They didn't say she is good or not. The fact that you have carried, love your wife. So, following the words of the preacher, let us honor our mothers. Children, honor your mother. If we have to let all these women share their experiences in life, you, if, if God, if sometimes the women have said, I've heard my wife say, I just wish one day God will give you me and give me you. <laughs> like you just carry the children for some month. You will understand the thing. Are you going to say that? Especially on this side of the world, it is not easy. They will be the one to do eight hours. Some of them do 16 hours. And then they come back from work. You are there watching newspaper. Say, my food is not ready. You eat the food, drop the plate. I say, if God has blessed you with children that are not yet grown up, she's still the one that will wash it. Even when it comes to the clothes, you say, I'm busy. You say, I'm busy. I'm in the meeting. They will even wash your own clothes too. And just to say thank you is difficult. They are not doing well. The way we are, that's why you see a lot of our mothers are dying untimely. There is a lot of pressure. And then when it is around 10 o'clock, quarter to 12, you say, oh, yeah, let's go to Jerusalem. And then the woman look at you, Jerusalem called Galilee. Ni. The wife you don't take care of in the day will not take care of you in the night. See, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just talking on honor now. <laughs> Take care of your wives. And then wife, appreciate the little your husband is doing. Don't kill the man. Learn to value every level. It's good to expect much from them, but life is about working together. If you are not ready to work together with your partner, you are not ready to make things work. Work together. That's how things can work. Work together. Don't frustrate your husband. Don't, there are many women that have frustrated their partners. Some can complain from here till Jerusalem come. Some have never learned the word thank you. 
You may not have the best man, but that one you have, somebody is praying that he or she is their husband. And sometimes when you have been in a journey for too long, we tend to take each other for granted. So when I say appreciate and honor, it is not just one-sided. Honor one another. Praise God. Then what is my gift for you today? I call it the ABC. For you mothers, as you celebrate this Mother's Day, number one, appreciate and celebrate yourself. Appreciate and celebrate yourself. Don't die under the burden of nobody values me. If nobody values you, throw it apart. There are times I just put the music on and say, me and you, today, me and you. I'll just dance myself. Is there anybody spraying me? No. But there is, it means just me and God. Just make yourself happy. I can't come and die. Make yourself happy. Then, uh, thank you, Jai. That lady supported the word. Yeah, that's the truth. There is a lot of burden and pressure in the world. One of the things that I can, I can guarantee your longevity is joyfulness of heart. You go to work, somebody is trying to torment you. you are not, your best is not still enough. You come back, everything is rugged. Just decide to make yourself happy. Maybe you are under a pressure at home. Maybe your marriage is not the best. Create time because we don't have eternity here. Why you have the short one? Make it happy. Appreciate yourself, mothers. Appreciate yourself. We may not say enough thank you, but appreciate yourself. You are doing the work. Say, thank me. I'm trying. <laughs> this one, I'm trying. Celebrate yourself. Take time out to go and treat yourself. I shared with you sometimes, I'll just go into the uh, Chinese restaurant and say, yeah, today. It's pay me day. Because I realized that in this world, you have to work for everybody. Those that didn't know how you are surviving will just be calling, messaging, inboxing, outboxing, whatsapping. And then they put you under obligation as if you do. Don't, if you don't do, you are the reason God brought them there. And then you are feeling, people have a way of putting guilt on you for what you didn't hold them. And then you are leaving yourself under, on your life under that body. Some of you have never been to a mall or even a store and buy something for yourself. All you are doing is, this my children, this is my husband, this is my... Continue. Take time out to just say, me day. Baba, take care of your children. I'm coming. Me day. Yeah, it's me day. Take me day. If you need to go to spa, go there. I sign you in. And in case you don't have people where to bring children, bring them in. I'll take care of them. You know why? Because nobody is going to take, nobody's going to take care of you. And this also applies to the men. All you know yourself for is work. When are you going to rest? When will you enjoy this thing you are working for? Don't live for bill. Because after you are gone, the bill will still be there. Take one day off. That's my gift for you this year. Midday. So yeah, eat one round. Go back again. Eat another one. Eat another one. They ask you what happened. You say it's midday. Praise God. That's the A number two. The B, be the best version of yourself. We don't sell, nobody celebrates mediocrity. Listen, listen, this is tough and harsh, but that's the truth, you know me. Don't die under the shadow of somebody else. Because you marry doesn't mean destiny is over. You have a life to fulfill. Being a missus doesn't mean you should miss it. Don't live your life under the shadow of your husband. If the man is not, ask yourself a question. If my husband is no more, will you survive? If you can't survive, that means you are not building up. I've seen homes here. I shared this with you sometimes ago. And if you are that kind of husband, you need to repent. Say, just be full as wife. The woman never worked in this country for 10 years. Suddenly, the man died. No life insurance. The woman, the work she had never done before in her life, she had to start from the scratch. And if people say we will stand by you in this country, it is opposite. Because the standby also needs standby. Those that say we will stand by you, they also need standby. We are all in need. We are all in need. So I'm challenging and that's what I do for you every year. 
If you need to go back to school, get in there. Be the best version of yourself. Be the best version of yourself. Push yourself to the point where at least, even if there is no man, you are not going to be a burden to nobody. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. And I didn't say that you'll be in competition. Don't be in competition with anybody. Be yourself. But be the best version of yourself. In every area, even in character and attitude, as a mother, be the best version of your motherhood. Learn what is changing and adjust alongside. I've shared this with you many times. In this country, when your children get to teenagers, you shift from mother to friend. If you don't, you lose them. I still had to deal with one situation two weeks ago or three weeks ago. The mother is so protective. The guy is already about 16. She had to look, he had to look at the mother in the face after so many months of conflict there and there. He said, you still treat me like a boy, like, like a baby boy. Ah, the woman didn't know that was the reason. So it got to the point when the mother is talking to the guy. Is also, she's a, he's a very respectful boy. But there is a way you treat a baby and there is a way you treat a teenager. As part of the things the boy was talking about is that when you say go and wash clothes, I mean go and wash the plate, I will appreciate if you just say it once. Junior, go and wash the plate. But he said, it gets to me when you keep saying, you have that plate, wash the plate, make sure it is clean, in and out, and then. You know, the guy was not seeing it. But I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you shouldn't um, train children, but one of the things I'm telling you, 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 you time will tell, just understand that there is a communication pattern. Trend has changed. We are in a generation Z. Trend has changed that you can get them to do what they didn't want to do just by the way to ensure that you make the right thing happen. It is being able to get into their mind that you'll be able to get what is in them. It's alarming to me. Teenagers are saying, I'm depressed and I'm wondering, what? What's depression? But you won't understand that the same way you are having pressure, these people also have pressures at school. They are dealing with things that they can't understand and interpret. Things around them, situations around them. While you are going to school, nobody brought gun to school. While they are going to school, they had their, age, their classmates kill one of them right there. Just this week, there is still one lady that still, this year will still shot somebody at school. So they are dealing with psychological issues like that. That you are now, we are saying, bring your head, let us pray in the name of Jesus. Those things are not prayer. Some of them are having nightmares of that thing. It's coming back to them in the dream. And they can't tell you. Because you are not even there to listen. When they say, mommy, I say, don't worry, let us pray in the name of Jesus. Sometimes they don't need you to listen. 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 I'm telling you. There are things they tell me I can't tell you. You need to listen. 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 So be the best version of yourself as a wife. Be the best wife to your husband. Today is Mother's Day, so I know somebody is saying, talk to the men too, talk to the men too. <laughs> we'll get there. Let's wrap up. Number three, commit yourself to a life in God. One of the greatest inheritance you can give your children is a life in God. A life that they know God. A life they love God. Let's, let me show you one scripture. And then we'll partake of the communion. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Verse number 5. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. And verse number 5. He said, when I call to remembrance. The unfeigned faith that is in thee. So I could see something in you as a child. He said, this thing first lived in your grandmother. This faith, can you shoot it on the screen? 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 5. He said, I am reminded of your sincere faith, talking to Timothy Paul. He said, this faith you are carrying, it was first in your grandmother, Louise. And then it was transferred to your mother, Ines. And I'm persuaded, now it also lives in you. When you look at this scripture, you discover that things are transferable. Not only should causes be the things we are transferring to our children's life, 
Not only should the negativities of our life be the only thing they are inheriting, they can also inherit your faith. They can inherit your faith. So the grandmother called Louise was the one that had built faith. And that faith was inherited by her own daughter called Eunice. And Timothy came from the loins of Eunice, also inherited the faith. What part of you will your child look like? Take it or leave it. They are learning from you. Mothers are role models. I want to beg you to be a good one. So commit yourself to a life of God. A life of God. A life in God. Where your children can know God because of you. And not the only thing they know is not fashion. The only thing they know is not party. All the festivals in town. Even your children know that Friday night. Yeah, she won't be, she won't be there. There is nowhere in Dallas they have not known her. So the only thing the children knows them for is Fajirista. The life of God they can't see. Some of these children are even confused. Sometimes they tell me things. I look at the way they say, I say, shy. So we see our mother and father in church lifting up hands and pretend as everything is right. Lifting up glory to glory to God. He now they are dancing, they are praying tongues. He said, but at home, they are not like this. Sometimes I have to sit down there and say, hey, take it easy. They are watching you. And some of them, you know, they, they are anointed to talk. They said, Pastor, you know that one is blasphemy. It's deceit, deception. It's deception. They're going to tell you, it's deception. And then how do you interpret that as a pastor? Sometimes our job is difficult. To be able to let that child understand that, you know, everybody has struggle at home. And then when you come to church, you have to put on your best face. And then they're going to tell you that that is deception. You're lying to God. Are you, are you picking the picture of what I'm saying? Yes. They were hearing you on phone lying. I'm coming, I'm on my way. And they can see you here. <laughs> so they are confused. I'm telling you, they are confused. I had one talk to me and said, Mommy and Daddy said we should not be lying. And then they lie. I said they are right. You don't lie. Even if... They, <laughs> no, do I expect that? I said that to say this as I conclude. You are not just the only one living. You are leaving something behind. They are watching you. Live right. Be a good role model. Of course, it requires grace. And the Lord will give us that Grace. So this year's Mother's Day, I want you to go out and make sure you appreciate yourself. Honor your spouses. Be the best version of yourself. And commit to a life of God. The Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching this life-transforming video. For more revelational and impactful teachings, visit our YouTube channel. At THE Empowerment TV or visit www.bit.ly slash wordplace1. Listen to our 24 hours radio dedicated to broadcasting prayers and God's word all around the clock. www.prayingradio.org Connect with Grace as you fellowship with us every Sunday at the Empowerment Center. 1074 South Erie Street, Fort Worth, Texas, 76112, service time, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. To reach Pastor Benjamin Beckley for prayers and counseling, call, plus 1-972-639-1763. We believe you have been blessed watching this message. Kindly share with others and be a blessing to them. God bless you.